guys and welcome back to another video here from the off-grid garage we are still off-grid of course nothing is connected to public power running the whole show off-grid in today's video i want to take care of the heat created by the inverter and the solar charge controller and a potential second solar charge controller and the potential third maybe there are more three or four in there i don't know yet there will be at least one more solar charge controller for this setup we will generate heat inside this cabinet here and if i close the door well it gets pretty warm in there it is fine if there is no load on the system and the inverter just kicks in from time to time to supply power here to the standby it is also fine if the pump is kicking in from time to time and using seven eight hundred watts of power um the in the enclosure is actually able to dissipate all this heat here to the environment here, to the outside world. Totally fine. It all depends, of course, on the weather situation outside. We've got only 28, 29 degrees, so it's not too hot. So, and because I have decided to mount the inverter inside the cabinet here, we need to get rid of the heat. Um, if I charge the car or if the ir irrigation pump runs for an hour, one and a half, two hours sometimes, uh, the inverter sucks in colder air down here and then the hot air comes out here. It has, it has a built-in fan which kicks in from time to time depending on the load and temperature situation inside the inverter. So we need to get rid of the heat. Um, so far I have just left the door open a little bit like this and this was enough to get rid of all the heat inside this cabinet here. But now we are going a step further and I want to add some fans to this cabinet. So what I thought I will do is these four 12 volt fans. So the idea is to mount these fans here at the top of the cabinet door along the way. And because they are 12 volt, I can just put them all in series and we've got a 48 volt fan system then. I have also bought some of these covers here. They come with some filter material. So this part goes on top of here. It screws into uh, each fan. And then this part goes on top. And in between there is the filter material, which I will not use for the exhaust. I've got more of these dust filters here. I'm not sure at this stage where I will put in the inlet, the air intake. If I put another row of these dust filters down here with the filter included, so it sucks in the air from, from the front of the door and then goes through the cabinet, cools down all the equipment and gets pushed out at the top again. So bottom inlet, top outlet. The alternative was as well to have the fans mounted at the top of the cabinet, pushing the air out to the top. But it is a bit hard to work on the cabinet now. I would need to disassemble all the equipment here again. Probably take the cabinet off the wall here to get the jigsaw and everything running across this area here and do the cutout. And actually someone mentioned this quite a while back under one of my videos and said if you ever need to put some fans or something just put them in the door. You can take off the door, you can work on it, you put the door back on and you are done. And this is exactly what I'm going to do right now. So I'm using these Cooler Master 120 millimeter fans here from computer cases. And as per their specifications, they've got a speed of 1500 RPM and an airflow maximum of about 50 cubic feet per minute. So from what I could see on the internet, this is rather on the high side actually. Yeah, other fans, they are starting at 20, 22 CFM. So this one is actually fairly high. I should have taken off the ground cable first, right? All right, and here's our door. So 
So they just fit between the door frame here and the lock on the other side. Just. So this is roughly how it looks like, well roughly, <laughs> I had to go a little bit lower because of the lock over there. See if I put all the, all the filters up here, you can see this filter is right under this support here already so I cannot really take the jigsaw and cut this out. Also the fans would not be in the middle of the door anymore because of the lock. So I just pushed them down just underneath the lock situation there and have marked all the cutouts and this is basically how it looks like then. So this is what I have to leave and all this needs to go. Minus the frame, which is very tiny. So I have to work very precisely, otherwise I will have a gap in the door. Okay, let's uh, drill some holes and see how we go. Okay, I'm drilling a hole in my $350 enclosure. So let's try the first fan. There is usually, oh here it is, there are usually some errors on here. You can see in which direction it turns and in which direction it blows. So we need to mount it this way. I drilled these holes a little bit bigger here, so I've got a little bit of play with the um, dust filter here to actually mount everything correctly so they are sitting tight together. Uh, well, it doesn't really matter at the moment, because I have to take it off anyway again. It's just the first test. Alright, there we go. And uh, then this top cover clicks in, and we are done. Not too bad actually, so hopefully they all fit in here. I think I have to modify one of the top covers here. I'm a little bit close to this lock, so I need to file a little bit to make it work with the lock. But that's fine. That's all right. Just fits. It just fits. All right. So that's how it looks like then. Is it straight? It doesn't look straight for some reason. <laughs> okay. Okay. 11.4. 11.4 perfect now it's all good it looks looks crooked and i'm just underneath the lock here that's good so now i have to take them out again because i need to paint the bare corners where i cut the metal otherwise it starts rusting this is just normal steel paint is dry. Well, there's almost 24 hours now. Let's uh, turn on the light here in the off-grid garage. Because it's running from battery power, right? You can just leave the lights on. Okay, so I can potentially mount these four fans now in here with the little dust cover grid. Well, it's not really a dust cover. There's no, there's no dust filter or something in it. Um, I have come up with this idea here for the bottom part of the door. I use only three intakes. Yep, this is one part and this is the other part and in between is this filter material. So I'm sure I will get some comments right away now because we've got four fans blowing out and we've got only three openings 
where the air can actually get into the enclosure. And this is probably bad from a fan perspective because we are creating some kind of under pressure inside the cabinet. Well, it's a bit like with your computer cases as well. Yeah? Do you have the fans pushing cold air in or do you have the fans pushing hot air out somewhere? Linus Tech Tips, he made a video not too long ago and they did a test for one year with three different computer cases. One of them has negative pressure, so more fans blowing air out. The other case had positive pressure, so more fans blowing air in. And the third case was a mix of both. So some fans blowing out, some fans blowing in. And the result was, I can't remember. If I find it, I'll link it down below, but I can't remember. The result wasn't too different actually. So I guess I will go with this. I can also mount three fans in here and have the dust filters and pushing air in and have these as the, uh, as the exhaust, so to speak, without air filter, just hot air coming out. That would be another possibility, but then I have only 36 volts of the fans. Yeah, so um, um, I'll just keep going. I'll drill some holes, cut this all out and paint this the same way as over there. And then we see us again. It takes only a second. Okay, guys, so that's how it looks like at the bottom. This is our air intake. If this all works, I don't know. I'll um, leave this all as it is at the moment. I'll get these corners painted now again and then tomorrow we can mount our fans and get the door back in. I need to order more of these dust filters actually. I've got only five. Guys, I'm back. Welcome. Can't get it. Welcome to another video here from the solar battery vlog in the off-grid garage. Ah, oh, it feels so good to be back in front of the camera. I haven't filmed anything for the last probably uh, almost three weeks. So everything you have seen before in this episode here, when I prepared the door for our enclosure, this was filmed mid of March. 13th, 14th around. Well, and because I was waiting for a very important part for our cabinet here, I couldn't do anything more than waiting. So I used the time to get all the videos ready and publish them so far until last Monday, I think that was the last video. And now we've got Friday, Good Friday. Happy Easter to everyone. Well, at least if you celebrate Easter. And if not, happy Friday to you. Okay guys, today we are mounting the new door into our enclosure and hopefully it will work and cools down <laughs> and cool down our system here enough to make it all work. If it works, I don't know. This will be a world premiere electric cabinet cooling system in the off-grid garage at least. All right, let me bring you up to speed. I have mounted all the inlet crits now. I have mounted all the fans here at the top. I have removed the yellow cable, which we don't need. Well, the yellow cable measures the RPMs of the fans. So I've removed all them. We don't need them. We want them to run in full speed. And let me just turn this around for you. And this is how the whole door looks like. And this is how the whole door looks like. Four fans in the top, sucking air out of the enclosure and three inlets with dust filters in the, at the bottom, sucking cool, fresh Arctic air in. Well, it is cooler. We've got autumn now and you can see blue sunny sky. All right, no worries. So, okay, so the next step will be to cable all this here. And um, yeah, let me start with that and I'll talk you through once it's done. Guys, I'm so pumped to make more videos for you now. It's so exciting. We've got so much stuff delivered I want to show you. And there will be another delivery from Solar Mar today. A very, very big one. A very big one. Raj was so kind to send this all over yesterday. And today it's, and today it's out for delivery. I'm just waiting for the truck to come in actually. I've got five days off now of work. So I've got plenty of time to make videos, edit them and upload them. So hopefully we are right on time now with uploading videos except for easter sunday when the kids are coming over but that's fine i've still got a couple of hours in the morning to make videos you can probably tell i'm excited right okay let's get started here 
Okay, so I'm just quickly connecting two cables here. Ah, silly me. <laughs> I just got my battery and wanted to connect everything and see if the fans are spinning. But this doesn't work anymore because... Oh, well, I was just going to connect these fans to my 12 volt AGM battery and thought, well, it won't work because the fans are running on 48 volt now. They're all working. Look what I did. I put them all in parallel. Oh, God. It's been a while, huh? Making a video. <laughs> And thinking clearly I don't know what I thought really I prepared this wiring harness last night and said yeah well this is all working you have the positive and negative running across and then connect the fans to these ones and have the heat shrink on and everything and just as I was going to connect the battery I said not this won't even work because I need 48 volt to run these fans now they're running on 12 volts at the moment ah. Well, at least, at least I can see they're all working and spinning, so that is all fine. That's a lot of air, you can feel the air here already. <laughs> okay, I have to change my harness here now to make them all in series. So positive from this one goes to negative of this one, positive here, negative, positive, negative, and then the positive here goes all the way across to our positive here. And then we've got 48 volt across the fans guys don't tell anyone i trust you with that don't tell anyone god it's a good start i have now cabled everything in series <laughs> you can see the cables here going from the black one which the negative Connecting to the red one of the next fan and then this black one of this fan goes to the red one of this fan and so on We've got the uh, Negative cable running all the way back. We've got the positive cable here connected to the first fan and then we've got uh, Positive and negative coming down here at this little terminal and from here. I'll make a bridge uh, Somehow over to the cabinet Well just for fun. Let's do this test again and see if the fans actually spin up at well, this is a 12 volt battery divided by four fans so every fan gets only three volts all right let's see if we connect it if the fans spin no nah, they won't no nah. maybe when i push them they keep spinning no 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 kind of yeah they keep spinning now so running on 12 volt 48 volt fan system this one not it's a different type okay so this is all cleaned up it's working now and i think we can just install the door back in the cabinet and then the video is finished i have to make a cut here because we have to prepare the cabinet now to actually connect the door the, the fans in the door here to our system but this will be in another video. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here. And you stay charged, stay safe, and we shall see us again in the next video starting in just a few minutes. All right, see you then. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.